It is Thursday, September 15th, 2011. I'm Alex Jones, your host. This is InfoWars Nightly News, a true revolution in information warfare against tyranny. Thank you for joining us. It is you, the viewers of this critical transmission that have made this program possible. Coming up tonight, we have got an amazing interview scheduled with Mark Moreno of Climate Depot, dealing with the fall of the greatest con artist of the 20th and 21st century. We're talking about Al Gore. That's coming up. Then we're going to talk to Wayne Madsen, who went to Indonesia. He's been getting death threats, you name it, and had CIA spooks following him, trying to shut down his interviews. He did confirm that, well, Obama did become an Indonesian citizen. This has incredible ramifications for his eligibility for the president. That's coming up at the end of the show tonight. It's supposed to be 30 minutes long. It's always an hour or more. We can't help it. There's too much information. It's real. It's unscripted. It's teleprompter free. Thank you for joining us. Now, let's get into the economy. It was always meant to be imploded by design. We told you three and a half years ago with the first banker bailout, it was only going to get worse. We told you that every single point of the way since then. Not because we're being pessimistic, but because we know that if we reverse these globalist policies, we can have incredible prosperity. This is a consolidation of our economy. The United States has the highest poverty in its modern history in the last hundred years. That's been reported even by the Associated Press. It is just incredible. We've become a third world nation. Mortgage default warnings have surged in August. And they believe it will be the biggest month ever uh, by September for mortgages. How is that for your Obamanoid recovery? Continuing, uh, again, jobless claims, inflation rise, manufacturing gets weaker. Well, they've got all these incredible regulations going against business here in our country. The bottom line is this. The social engineers have set up a depression by design so they can offer their solution, a global government run by the private banks that engineered this fraud. And if you give in to that level of tyranny, you'll give in to the next level. And that's what's happening. Now, I want to go to a compilation of clips here of different White House officials and the head of the Federal Reserve, Tiny Tim Geithner, all of them, saying our economy was getting better in the last three years. The whole time they knew we were going into a depression. Here it is. The policies that we are undertaking, uh, notwithstanding short-term fluctuations, will lead to a uh, strong and stable dollar in the medium term. You, you, American economy was falling off the cliff in the fall of 08 and the first months of his administration. And he put in place the most creative, the most forceful set of economic measures we have ever done as a country. And because of that, we prevented a second Great Depression and the economy has now been growing for more than a year and a half. More than two million jobs in the private sector since job creation started again. Faster job creation than the last two recoveries. These are total BS numbers. They claim 9% unemployment. Even 60 Minutes says it's 22%. Most economists 24 or higher. Their answer is carbon taxes, more regulations on American business. They are killing this economy so they can consolidate it. And their answer to the next crisis is give us more money. And then it's always give us more money and give the private offshore banks more of your tax money. It's amazing. Now, shifting gears into some other subjects, dealing with the incredible police state unfolding worldwide, not just here, but in England, three-year-olds are branded racist and homophobic, put in government database. That's right, um, 30,000 plus, 34,000 children, including people as young as three, are now being put in criminal databases for bullying or repeating things they've seen on television, all part of the social engineers getting everybody into the criminal justice system. This is the new form of tyranny. The Daily Mail reported racist age three, toddlers among thousands of children accused of bigotry after name calling. This is the political correctness, divide and conquer to get us all at each other's throats, as if a three-year-old knows what's going on, quote, racially. Uh, continuing, don't worry, in Michigan, they've passed a law 
where they're putting everybody's children in a database. If you're even one pound overweight, you're putting a database. If your children don't make you lose the weight, you're taken to a CPS center and, well, put on drugs, and the, and the state government gets a bunch of money uh, in the process from the federal government for taking over your life. Uh, but don't worry, Miss Obama is lauding the Olive Garden and other big chains. They have announced that they're not going to let people uh, order food like full fat milk or french fries that isn't good for them. And she's lauding the fact that the restaurants are going to follow the federal government's orders and monitor everything people eat. And they're coming out with taxes against people uh, who eat things that they say aren't healthy. And all over the Western world, they're talking about taking people's children away from them uh, if they are shy. That's a normal instinct of boys and girls, the people they don't know, uh, to not want to come over and talk to them. But the government's answer is, hey, Big Pharma paid us off. Your kid is shy. We're going to put them on a drug that's going to basically eat their brain. How's that sound? But don't worry. Uh, the social engineers know you're awake to sodium fluoride, radioactive isotopes, lead, mercury, arsenic in your tap water. So their answer is to fear monger all over national TV and tell you that apple juice is evil because it has biologically bound trace amounts of arsenic in the seeds. So when companies crush the entire apple, there's a tiny bit of arsenic that's been proven as a trace element is needed for the uptake of other vitamins and minerals, but their answer is to start restricting that devilish apple juice. So that is going on as well. Now, I played you that economic clip where they're telling you how wonderful the economy is, but George Soros, who said in the last five years he's having a great economic crisis, says that we must embrace mass centralization of power in Europe, a new banking dictatorship, or a, another great depression will ensue. And then you give him more power and pay your taxes to him because he sold you some Ponzi scheme derivatives, and things only get worse. They don't get better. That's the moral of the story. The globalists get you into a crisis and then always offer you more tyranny as the solution. Mark Moreno and then Wayne Madsen are coming up with some groundbreaking interviews. But first, I want to get into some other treason. It is now admitted that France and England are sending a delegation to meet with al-Qaeda, who they admit has been given control over the North African country of Libya. That is the areas that they control uh, Muammar Gaddafi is still fighting them, and they say that al-Qaeda has been given cruise missiles and everything else, but as we pointed out, um, in association with this visit, they're not discussing the fact that they've put al-Qaeda in power, but separately, in a schizophrenic fashion, NATO is coming out and saying they may have to have war with al-Qaeda, who's now gotten control of Libya. These are the so-called freedom fighters. Now, getting into the Snoop Society, uh, this evening. Congressman Lamar Smith from right here in Central Texas has introduced the See Something, Say Something legislation. You know, in the Constitution, you're able to face your accuser in court, but this says now that people can anonymously make up lies about you, and you can be thrown into a gulag for the rest of your life. And they're running TV ads everywhere saying, if you see a piece of paper blowing down the road or a box on the side of the street, go into a hysteria and call the government. And that's already been happening. They've been at 50-plus airlines, the FBI admitted, on the last holiday shut down and land because people were kissing or went to the bathroom or one guy passed gas and everybody thought it was a bomb. I'm not, I'm not joking. The wicked flee when none pursue. Land of the free, home of the brave. How about land of the cowards, home of the slaves? It's time to wake up and stop levying these criminals in government that are robbing the daylights out of us, fear-monger us into submission. Meanwhile... More and more, I see cases in the snitch society where people that don't buy the right hunting license are banned all over the country from hunting. You swipe your license to get a hunting license. And, and, and I saw a report uh, out of the Salisbury Post today, uh, the Drudge Report carried it as well, that a man who didn't have the right license in another state to kill a 14-point white-tailed deer has been globally banned in a global database from hunting. So this is how freedom dies, not with a uh, big bang, but with just a slow decline as this private corporate global government picks up steam against free humanity. We take you now, my friends, to an interview with Mark Moreno, 
of Climate Depot, and then Wayne Madsen. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and stand for true investigation and true debate, as this Nobel Prize winner does, standing up to Al Gore, you need to support and subscribe to PrisonPlanet.tv. All right, we're about to go to Mark Moreno. Well, the story made headlines across the world. Nobel laureate resigns from society because of its global warming fear-mongering. We're going to talk to Mark Moreno, really one of the leading people in the last decade exposing the fraud of man-made global warming or anthropogenic warming, to discuss the fact that Al Gore has gone from saying that he is the ruler of the earth, the high priest who speaks the truth and no one can challenge him to now scrabbling around, uh, behaving like the con artist he is, and desperately trying to get people to pay attention to him and telling the world that he controls reality. But everything is conspiring against him. The sea levels are dropping. The ice is growing at record rates. And more and more scientists are pointing out it's the sun, not carbon dioxide, that's less than 1% of the world's atmosphere. Joining us to break all of this down is Mark Moreno, a voice in the wilderness long ago, but he stuck to the facts, so now the truth is coming out on top. Mark, thank you for joining us, but you warned me, joining us live on Skype, a thunderstorm's rolling in right now, which we never had thunderstorms or rain before, so perhaps... <laughs> Never had weather before man-made global warming, so it's possible that at one of Al Gore's predicted storms could interrupt our interview here. Well, yeah, everything. Dust storms, earthquakes, hot weather, cold weather. I mean, there, rain never fell until man did bad things. So do you want to apologize right now that there's a storm uh, maybe approaching right now? Yes, I do. And, I, you know, if, if you look at this, I wish we had had carbon taxes in the 1930s. We could have prevented the Dust Bowl drought from happening. If only we had visionaries back then. <laughs> the inventor of the internet. Yes, what's happened now is Al Gore has started his 24-hour campaign, and it is so atrocious, so offensive, that even committed global warmists are bailing on Al Gore. The UK Guardian's Leo Hickman has said his stomach stank when he started watching it. He couldn't believe that every bad weather event was being linked to global warming. He said Al Gore is opening himself up to charges of being an alarmist. He said it's not what you want to peg your hat on. Committed global warmists are asking the question, as the UK Guardian did today, is Al Gore helping the global warming cause? Al Gore is losing his own people. He's still off the reservation. Well, I'm glad you raised that because I just saw that this afternoon. When I saw the promo video yesterday, it was like, in that weird, fake, feminine voice he's got that sounds like the biggest con artist on earth out of some Lovecraft novel. He's saying storms, fires, rain, oh, pay me money, no one can question us. I mean, it, it just looks like someone bleeding out and floundering. Here's my question. Is Al Gore on the edge of the precipice or has he already fallen off of it? Can Humpty Dumpty be put back together again? I don't know. I mean, this is... it. You, you, we can declare him dead for so long. The problem is the difference between man-made global warming and all the other eco scares is this is the most well-funded scare by a factor of a thousand over all the previous scares, global cooling, overpopulation, the Amazon rainforest disappearing. Damn it. No eco scare has been this institutionalized and funded. So Al Gore just keeps reinventing himself. He was talking about unprecedented global warming, but now he's forced to talk about extreme weather, a flood here, a hurricane there. There is absolutely no data to support what he's saying. We have at Climate Depot peer-reviewed studies showing the Russian heat wave that Gore likes to cite was not due to man-made global warming, that floods were not due to man-made global warming. As he's speaking this week, Alex, it's as though Mother Nature is playing a joke on him. We're getting summertime snow in Colorado, record cold in Iowa. We're getting crops destroyed by freezes in Minnesota. I saw that huge snows in Aspen. Yes, and the cold is descending on the U.S. That's not the only thing. A new study shows Antarctic ice growing. In the last five days, the Arctic, the North Pole, has expanded by several Manhattans. I think it's three Manhattans a minute in expanding ice as Al Gore is speaking. Three Manhattans a day, it might be, actually. And sea level just came out today. Sea level has dropped again. They're calling it a historic drop in sea level. This could not be more comical if Mother Nature had a greater sense of well, humor. Well, that's right. In fact, he chose yesterday and today as the launch 
of his uh, 24 hours of baloney, or what he calls reality, because this is the, the date he picked, what, many years ago, that L.A. would be underwater, New York, and instead Der Spiegel says, we still believe in man-made climate change, not warming, change, seasons didn't exist until now, uh, pay them money or we're all dead, but, but, but now Der Spiegel's saying sea levels dropping is global warming. Yes, they're, they're, yeah, yes, they're absolutely, no matter what happens. And here's what, at Climate People, we actually documented dozens of peer-reviewed studies literally predicting the exact opposite of each other. We have studies predicting more drought, less drought, more floods, less floods, more hurricanes, less hurricanes. And why do they do that? Now, no matter what weather events happen, they can say, we predicted it. And the bottom line is they predict everything and anything, whatever the weather, whether ice, pack, uh, ice caps expand or retreat it's all consistent with man-made global and this warming. is the new attack pattern i've noticed this the last two years what two years ago that obama talking point came out even the new york times reported on it they just said we're going to call all change seasons snow hot cold everything so it's kind of like buying every square on a craps table or or, or every number right. on a roulette and so no matter what happens, they're like, oh, my God, there were forest fires. Well, we've always <laughs> yeah. had, it's just, oh, my God. But then meanwhile, the sun has nothing to do with it, they claim. No, in fact, you know, here's, the, here's the real story. Hundreds of factors make up our global temperature. And even warmest sites like realclimate.org has admitted this. Everything from tilt of the Earth's axis to ocean cycles, the clouds, water vapor, methane, CO2, uh, um, volcanoes, uh, land use, deforestation, you name it. And what Al Gore has tried to do and what the global warmists have tried to do through the United Nations, through the corrupted science, is try to claim that one of these hundreds of factors that influence our temperature, if we can tweak that on the margin, we can somehow control the Earth's thermostat. This is now classic witch burning. Al Gore is engaging in a classic witch burner mentality. He's basically saying, we never had this kind of weather before those witches moved in the neighborhood, before you own your SUV, before you had central air conditioning and heating in your home. And they want people not only to feel guilty, but they want them to think that acts of United Nations treaties and acts of Congress, taxes and legislation can control the weather. We are no better now than pagan cultures, than ancient civilizations like the Aztecs in 1450, who slaughtered thousands of people to appease the angry gods to end a drought. Al Gore thinks we can tax and regulate ourselves to, to perfect weather. This is obscene. And again, even the global warmest are bailing on him. And, and here's an interesting factoid. He brings in his own warmest scientists. They get stumped on questions about sea level. Miss Rhode Island, he has beauty pageant contestants trumping his own warmest scientists in a panel. I posted this at Climate Depot. The Miss Rhode Island beauty pageant contestant knew more about sea level than Al Gore's chosen scientists from the American Meteorological Society. This is an embarrassment of riches it's a question of how anyone's going to sit through 24 hours and just pick all this beautiful, uh, inane, sophomoric, sappy, maudlin nonsense out. But Al Gore has provided us with a rich environment. But it looks like even the German media is ignoring it. The U.S. media is. Well, that was my point, is, is yeah. that, wow, how the great have fallen. This was a guy who for decades would lecture us all and, and, and the media, oh, yes, sir. Oh, we'll all be dead soon. And, yeah. and, and, and now your analogy is spot on where they would sacrifice 10,000 people on certain holidays, not just in the Aztec culture, but the Druids would sacrifice people as well. When there was an eclipse, oh, God, make the sun god bring the sun back or make the moon I mean, god bring the moon back. I, I mean, he's literally saying you've got this gas that's 0 0.0360 and has been... 30% of the atmosphere before, thousands of times higher. Last 200,000 years, 14 times higher. And this thing, clearly in the public graphs in every university, heat goes up, carbon dioxide goes up after it, and he's yeah. lying and flipping it, and all of this hoax comes out, and his response is to come out and say, we're hoaxing. Uh, here's my question for you. Yeah. How, what's the counterattack? Because as you and others have pointed out, Lord Moncton was on with us yesterday, $100 billion spent in the U.S. alone, hundreds yeah. of billions total globally, to push this, this, this guilt where school children cry that they're killing the earth and pay money to Al Gore. You know, let them, green police in, go in your house. 
So, so it doesn't matter that this has all been exposed in England, Australia, who are about five years ahead of us, as you know. The Green Police are now out there digging through trash cans, going in the houses. This is their authoritarian cover. So how are they going to respond to the fact that their cult is falling in on itself, A, and B, how do we counter that, Mark Moreno? Well, unfortunately, they respond by having the regulatory authority of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. The EPA was granted the authority by the United States Supreme Court to regulate what we exhale from our mouth. That is our greatest threat. Unelected bureaucrats in government doing what Congress, what the American people would not allow Congress to do, and that's regulate CO2, a trace essential gas in the atmosphere. And by the way, you look at Hurricane activity, 30, 40 year historic lows as CO2 has risen. In fact, CO2, uh, big hurricanes were bigger when we had less CO2 in the atmosphere. Tornadoes, the big tornadoes have declined dramatically since the 1970s as CO2 has climbed. As we mentioned, sea levels, no acceleration, it's actually dropping. So they haven't got the science, but they have got the government, the bureaucrats, they're going to keep coming. Al Gore is not giving up on this. The United Nations is not giving They've up on this. They've got the arrogance. They're never going to stop with their scams. He might as well say he made the planet, not just the, the Internet. He might he sold us NAFTA and GATT. This guy is pure poison. He literally is a dagger trying to slit the throat of this country, shut down our power sources, everything. So they're not going away, and the EPA is saying they don't care what Congress has done. They're going to go forward. Is mm -hmm. it a victory that at least Obama said he's going to back off some of these new carbon tax regulations last week? Is that a victory? It's a, it's a very delayed, it's a, de, it's a delaying tactic. What it all comes down to is the next president, it's going to be key who, what they do with the, with the EPA. If, if Obama's reelected, he will go forward with the CO2 regulations. They'll go forward with all these shutting down of coal plants. They're already still, the coal plants are still, we're doomed. You have Republican, alleged Republican mayors like Bloomberg bragging that he's stopping hundreds of coal plants from being built by aligning themselves with environmentalists. Coal plants that provide 50% of our electricity in this country. Coal plants that keep people alive in record cold winters. Coal plants that, that power our modern way of life steel and carbon-based energy one of the greatest liberators of mankind they've reversed it all crony capitalism they have all these green job scam unraveling before them they're not giving up but the bottom line is the american people have stopped them thus far as long as we keep our feet to their throats we can prevent this we have prevented it we shut down the climate bill in congress i credit talk radio almost single-handedly with doing that they were terrified you had People like John Kerry, the senator from Massachusetts, terrified to utter the phrase global warming on the Senate floor. We intimidated the authors of the climate bills to be terrified of their own issue. We had Barbara Boxer wouldn't even cite the United Nations as a source anymore after Climategate because of the scandal. So we have made progress. The problem is, in the history of America, is the more progress we make, the more devious they get, and the more successful, you could argue, they'll get behind the scenes. And that's where... That's where we have to be careful of the backdoor climate bill through the EPA. And but but Mark, hold on. Trees are blowing a little bit behind you. And, and he, <laughs> he showed me a video yesterday. He said, if trees move, that's because I've been bad. And if I pay him money and let control freaks come in my house and inspect me and, right. and my light bulbs, my toilet, knock the windows out of my SUV like they do here in Austin, that, that he'll keep me safe. So, you know... Uh, I just don't understand why you're a denier. Why? Because, I mean, you, look, man, Mark, let's just admit right now, you're crazy. You yeah, actually you know that carbon dioxide was higher in the past, which is a fact, but you're still stating it. That means you're a cultist. Uh, you know that um, the sun is driving, of all the factors, you know, the largest effect on climate, and you're just not going along with it. Wouldn't it just be better to slit your wrist politically and psychologically and spiritually and get into that hot bathtub with Al Gore. I mean, wouldn't, I mean, man, bear, pig, man, bear, pig cares about America. And, you know, I've been sarcastic, but, but closing here, at the end of the day, we know it's a power grab. GE can keep its plants open. The competition can't. We understand it's a guilt-ridden mafia, a new form of scientific authoritarianism, guilt-driven. I understand all that. But from your decades of research, what is at the core of these control freaks? Why does... Al Gore and Maurice Strong and all and the Goddard Space Center head Hansen, 
Why do they say they want to destroy America and destroy an industrial society? Is it just because their investments are in China and by shutting us down, their investments go up? Or is it more? Why do they hate humanity so much? Because yeah, it's much more than that. I mean, you have to look at people like Paul Ehrlich, who wanted forced sterilization agents in our water. You have to look at Obama's science board, John Holdren, who actually said cheap energy is one of the hazards of a free society. This is an anti-human agenda. One of the co-founders of Greenpeace, Patrick Moore, left Greenpeace in the 80s, said it. The environmentalists today are, are practicing an anti-human agenda. You have Vaclav Klaas, the president of the Czech Republic, who's openly said since the fall of communism, the greatest threat to personal freedom is what he terms ambitious environmentalism. And you can prove this by the fact that whether it was global cooling, overpopulation, deforestation, species extinction, or global warming, the solution was always the same. International bean counters and bureaucrats taking over our lives, regulating us. This, and this is very simply summed up by saying the more the plans failed, the more the planners plan. And that's what it's about. These are bean counters who think they know how to control our lives. It's an ideology of central planning at its core. Profit motive, I think, secondary, because they all make So it's money a cult of control here. freaks that want to come in Mark Moreno and Alex Jones's house and want to tell little kids and scare the daylights out of them, look, trees are blowing, pay this big fat con artist money and he'll protect you. The good news is we've seen them with their facade of, 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 of arrogant confidence, man, to now just grasping at straws and desperate. I know we can beat them. And, and is it too positive to say that basically we're about 10 rounds in and we're really kicking their ass? We are. But if we look back, a lot of our defeats have come in the in the 12th round or the 15th round, depending on how many rounds you're playing. So you can't let up. And the greatest threat we would face, I submit to you this, Alex, is a weak Republican president. A weak Republican president would pass a climate bill before and a, and a Republican Congress would go along with I'm it. I'm glad you raised it. Let me stop you. We've <laughs> yeah. got we've got formerly worked with Al Gore, uh, Rick Perry. Uh, we've got Mitt Romney, Al Gore praises him for supporting carbon taxes. Yeah. We've got Newt Gingrich supporting it and doing TV ads with idiots like Al Sharpton. Uh, so out of the field, then, who would you vote for? Well, Perry talks a very talks exactly right on the issue. The question is, is he is he is he going to follow through? Perry has the rhetoric down. You mentioned Romney, Gingrich, all horrible. Rick Santorum has a very good position on climate change. Herman Cain, Ron Paul. Um, if your issue is climate, it comes down to how much you trust Rick Perry on the issue because he's saying the right things, although not very articulately at the moment. Uh, and then otherwise, Ron Paul has said the right thing. And as long as you keep government from doing anything, it doesn't really matter what a candidate believes in the science. The problem is it's really going to come down to defunding this as well. You can't have a President Romney or someone like that who's going to come in who's explicitly stated they support Al Gore's view of the science doesn't look likely to cut and defund this scam. And that's what needs to happen from the EPA, the Department of Energy to our National Academy of Science. Our National Academy of Science is a sham. It, was, it took $6 million to study uh, man-made global warming and turned around and lobbied Congress uh, to pass a climate bill. Yeah. And this is the A-Gust body. People say, well, it started by Abraham Lincoln. Oh. These are the esteemed scientists. Uh, no, this is now reduced to hackery. This is a special interest group. Our scientists, and there are only two dozen members of the governing boards that vote for statements supporting man-made global warming. This is why you had a Nobel Prize uh, winning physicists just resign another science group, the American Physical Society. Well, Mark, that was my next point in, in, in the final closer, because I know you're busy and we've got to get on to other stuff here. We could talk for 10 days about these criminals, is that all these prominent scientists, even people that have supported it, are saying, look, this is bull. Your claim that this evidence can't even be looked at is anti-scientific. Finally, in the final equation, you've talked some about uh, the ways this cancer is trying to survive and metastasize. How do we finally beat these people, A, and, and B, and this is most important, is it an overstatement by me that this is the most important issue in the world? Because when I see globalists, one-worlders, consolidators, big megabanks, they are the ones funding this, and I've never seen hundreds of billions put into anything. This is their excuse to set up this global, bureaucratic, socialist, anti-human system, and people need to wake up in my view, that this is the big enchilada. You've, this is the Death Star. We have got to blow this thing up because everything else is a side issue. Absolutely, and that's what's scary. When any candidate or anyone running for office accepts the science, 
you're basically doomed long term. And what we're finding here uh, in Germany, the German climate advisor is calling for a CO2 budget for every man, woman and child on the planet, Alex. England this is. And England is calling for carbon ration cards yeah. for their workers so the government can monitor your airline travel, your car mileage, where you set your thermostat. Jesus. A level of control George Orwell didn't even contemplate. And Nancy Pelosi goes to China two years ago and says we need a complete inventory on every aspect of our lives in order to battle global warming. This is not a coincidence. This is the way they want to lead and they want to control. They don't think free men and free women can make decisions on their own. It's got to be a planned, managed economy and energy economy and it's immoral and repulsive what's happening it in the developing world as they shut down coal plants nuclear plants modern um energy infrastructure carbon based in favor of solar panel on huts made of dung this is the greatest immoral thing white wealthy westerners white wealthy environmentalists telling poor people of color they can't have what we have in our modern way of life this is obscene it's decadent and they need to be exposed there can be no quarter given especially when it comes to funding. The next president has to defund, defund, shut down. Because even defunding short term, the next president will restore the funding. So this is something, and we've got to be absolute on the science. You've got to, you've got to call them what it is. You cannot be intimidated by the media. Exactly. These politicians try to sound reasonable and let this con yeah. artist Al Gore and the UN and, and then have a serious you know, debate with them when they're proven fraudsters. But, but listen... By the way, Al Gore's spokeswoman canceled a debate at the last minute last night on another radio show uh, with a with a global warming skeptic saying she wanted she didn't want to she didn't want to get into the get into it. So Al Gore's organization yet again has denied debating. Debating Al Gore has never debated, as you know. Lord Moncton has challenged him. Uh, Come on, they, Al, baby. <laughs> well, but I mean that's my point here is that I have three children. I've studied political systems. I, I'm a history buff. And, and for anybody out there watching, you know, this Al Gore crap that we're oil company funded, I get zero money from oil companies. Most big oil companies are supporting it because they want to shut down coal. I, I, I don't get any money from coal either. I'm not saying this stuff's perfect. There could be new energies. The point is, this is authoritarianism, Mark. We think of authoritarianism as Hitler or Stalin or Mao, old images 50, 60 years ago. Every new generation has a new authoritarianism. And this cult of control freaks... I read their writings. They hate humanity. They're anti-human. And they're such degenerate liars. And I'm so glad Climate Depot is there. And thank God you're there eloquently fighting them. But you're right. We've got to stay on them and rout them out. And, and that's the final caveat here. This interview is going over, but it's so important. We appreciate your time. What about this call? Because it's now happening against me, where they're saying, go after them, get them. They're like racist, as Al Gore said in the 60s, yeah. and, and arrest uh, uh, Moreno, Jones, Moncton, yeah. Ron Paul. I mean, these people are such authoritarians, they call it green fascism and say authoritarianism is good. I mean, can't people see a Hitler when they declare themselves? Well, this is, you know, we have Grist Magazine, a big environmental magazine, actually called for Nuremberg style trials for global warming skeptics, comparing us to Nazi war criminals. Al Gore has said we're flat earthers, we're people who believe the moon landing was fake, despite the fact that astronauts who walked on the moon are major global warming skeptics. And the head of the UN has said that, you know, again, the flat earth society. The smears, the intimidation, the threats have only worked against them. It has flushed out all these scientists who would otherwise have remained silent to finally speak out. That's why you're getting Nobel Prize winning physicists resigning from science boards, protesting loudly about the, the con. Why do they miscalculate? I've got to ask this. This is why do they miscalculate? Because I agree with you. Historically, when you crush people and intimidate people, they fight back. Why do these global warmest control freaks, scum authoritarians, and again, worse than that, words can't describe them, why do they think by intimidating and firing real scientists and attacking us and saying arrest us, why do they think it would make us shut up? I agree with you. This is why people are fighting them, because they see the authoritarian nature. A lot of people that bought into global warming, as you mentioned, Nobel Prize winners, go, well, since they're being authoritarian, let me look at it. They look at it and find out it's pure bull. Here's the simple reason. They think it's 1985. They think it's 1975. They have not adjusted to the new reality of talk radio, cable news, the Internet. And what they did, what Al Gore and the United Nations and the media tried to do in 2007 and 8 may have worked in 1977 or 1985, but it wasn't going to work 
in 2007 and 2008, the world exploded around them. We've made evening newscasts irrelevant. We've made CNN irrelevant. We've made Al Gore and his book and film and an Oscar and Nobel Prizes irrelevant. A majority of the human race isn't afraid of global warming, according to the latest Gallup survey of 111 countries. They have failed spectacularly. They're going on an old paradigm. They're going on a paradigm that would have worked decades ago when they could have crushed dissent and they controlled. We only had three television stations and some major newspapers, but it doesn't work now. That's right. They're using old Cold War Soviet model crap, and we know that's where this all came from. It's like some weird vestigial leftover from that communist system, and it's failed. Mark Moreno, I have heard nothing but pure veritas here. I think this is one of the best interviews I've ever done, and I've been honored to have you. ClimateDepot.com. When we defeat these anti-liberty traitors, you deserve a prize for this, and not a fake Nobel Prize, but a Congressional Medal of Honor against their tyranny. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Alex. Enjoyed it. Amazing. Listen, these people want to shut off our industrial base, shut off our power systems because they've all invested in China. They are enemies of every man, woman, and child. We're going to break and we're coming back to talk to Wayne Madsen who went to Indonesia, who is going to be uh, giving us a report on the birth certificate issue. I was never a birther. But the fact is, they're trying to shut down anybody that tries to investigate this. They're scared of it. It's turned out his social security numbers are fake. We're going to be covering that after this break. Stay with us. The American dream. There's a reason they're calling it a dream. <laughs> Who's there? Cock-a-doodle-doo, pal. No, 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 no! I don't have any more money! My job sucks right now, please! I'll have more money next month! You can't take my house! Is that your signature? It is a private bank owned by private stockholders. A, a, a private bank? Do not let the name Federal fool you. If I got this money from the bank, and the bank got it from the Federal Reserve dump tracks, where does the Federal Reserve get their money? They take our property away, just like Thomas Jefferson said they would. Those sons of bitches! It's the greatest theft in human history. Wow, that was one of the most powerful interviews I've ever done. That is Veritas with Mark Moreno. Now, coming up in a few minutes, we're going to be talking to Wayne Madsen with some breaking news. But first, look, I've not been a birther. Going back four years ago when Obama started campaigning, people said, hey, this guy is an American. I'm like, listen, he's a gun grabber. I'm against him. I don't want to get into where he's from. But over the years, sealing the high school records, the college records, the the freaking out, the demonization, the earlier, three years ago, fake birth certificate they put out, and then the latest one. Something is going on here. And then a federal judge ruled just a few weeks ago, it doesn't matter if he has a fake Social Security number. He can go forward. And then today, World Net Daily and others reported that they did the online check the E-Verify that we've even done with employees here, and it said, listen, this Social Security number is questionable. Fraud is involved. This guy can't even pass a basic business background check. He never lived in Connecticut. We know that's a fake Social Security number assigned to him. Why would the system want to put an illegal alien, like his uncle who's about to get deported, in power? Why would they want to do this? Because they can blackmail him. They've got him by the short hairs. That's what's going on here. It's very, very simple. Obama is a teleprompter reading puppet. I could care less. He's a distraction. But at the end of the day, he's a 21st century latest model of a puppet who is totally and completely compromised. 
All right, you can full screen that so then I can come back to it. Massive new radioactivity possible if melted core hits the water. That's what Infowars.com has been reporting on, as well as Washington's blog. It's all over the Japanese news. It's been making Chernobyl look like child's play in the last six months, but now as water begins to pour in, it threatens a giant new explosion that'll rain radiation down on the U.S. But that doesn't matter because the EPA has already raised the level of radiation, saying any level is safe. With more on the plunging fortunes of the corporate frontman Barack Obama, we're joined by Wayne Madsen, who's a Navy anti-submarine warfare expert, worked for the National Security Agency, RCA. He has reported from Capitol Hill for decades on national security issues and broken some of the biggest stories concerning illegal spying on the American people and other national security issues. Well, he's somebody who is more progressive and uh, it was certainly not attacking Barack Obama because uh, he was some Republican with an axe to grind. But he has been to Chicago. He has been to Jakarta, Indonesia. He has been all over the world tracking uh, the real identity and providence of Barack Hussein Obama, a.k.a. Barry Satoro, or back to a.k.a. Barack Obama. And we've now seen the reports uh, that World Hunt Daily and others uh, have run E-Verify flags Obama's social security number out of Connecticut uh, as probably fraudulent. Uh, it's been admitted that uh, he did not live in Connecticut and should not have been issued one. We know his mother worked for the CIA. And, and Wayne Madsen has broken a lot of the research uh, that others later pick up and sometimes misrepresent. So he joins us to talk about the incredible developments when he was in Indonesia where they tried to block him every step of the way. Same thing happened with Jerome Corsi in Kenya. And then, of course, the Kenyan government has now released their national security letter when George W. Bush was sending letters trying to find out about the providence uh, of Barack Obama. And they uh, wrote back to the White House and said, look, um, whoever he is, it's been erased out of the records uh, here. It's been destroyed, so there is a cover-up. So cover-up just like with Nixon and the plumbers and Watergate, is the evidence of the crime 99% of the time. Truly a Manchurian candidate. Joining us from D.C., where he's back uh, visiting, is Wayne Madsen, traveling the world. Wayne, let's, let's start out with Obama and uh, what you've discovered. Well, I spent uh, almost a month in Jakarta, Indonesia. This is, of course, where Obama lived uh, after his mother took him there in 1967. He was six years old. Um, I, I, the minute I arrived in Jakarta, it was quite clear that um, I was being followed around. I had, uh, for example, I had an interview scheduled with Obama's uh, school teacher. She's quite old now. Uh, but uh, that, that interview was canceled at, I mean, the very last minute. It was quite clear that the embassy was sending people around uh, to dissuade people from talking to me. Now, I did manage to talk to quite a few people, even with that kind of pressure. Uh, but the, the, the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta uh, is in total uh, cover-up mode on behalf of Obama. Uh, it, it, we, we also know that he... Uh, uh, on his mother's passport uh, at, uh, application to have her passport renewed, she listed uh, uh, Obama's name as uh, Barack uh, Obama. And then there was this name, Sobarka, that had then been sort of crossed out. Uh, it, it, it's very apparent that uh, in Indonesia, people use um, one name, uh, Suharto, Sukarno. Uh, and um, uh, it looks like Sobarka was more than likely the Indonesian name given to Barack Obama. So the mere fact that uh, it came to me from government sources in Indonesia, Indonesian government sources, that uh, uh, Mr. Obama never did get his U.S. citizenship back after his legal guardian, Lolo Satoro, renounced it so he could attend two schools there and the law at the time, and I have a copy of the law in Indonesian, which I'm trying to get certifiably translated to English, specifically states, it's a 1958 law, you must be an Indonesian citizen to attend both the Menteng Elementary School 
where he, uh, he, he that's the last school he went to. And before that, the St. Franciscus uh, Academy, a Catholic school. In both cases, only Indonesian citizens could attend those schools. So he was, uh, uh, he had to be legally an Indonesian citizen. Indonesia does not recognize dual citizenship. So And, and that, Wayne, this is bombshell, and I want you to elaborate on it. Uh, for those that don't know, because if you give up your U.S. citizenship to become an Indonesian citizen, you can't later then become a U.S. president. So I want you to comment on that. Right. And even if Obama did get his U.S. citizenship restored, that would change his status from natural born to a native born American citizen. And the Constitution is quite specific. Only a natural born citizen can serve as president or vice president of the United States. So with that broken citizenship, uh, th this kind of takes all the, this puts the focus really on the citizenship issue and not, not the birth certificate. Let's, let's say he was born in Hawaii. Even though he was born in Hawaii and was a natural born citizen, the mere fact that he was an Indonesian citizen, U.S. citizenship renounced, and he may not have gotten his U.S. citizenship restored, if ever, legally, uh, uh, after the age of 18, he could have done it. I mean, you can't hold him responsible for the actions of his mother and his stepfather, but he had, he had to uh, declare his U.S. citizenship once again uh, before he reached the age of 18. There's every indication that that was not done, and that, I think that now puts the focus on uh, who assigned him this fraudulent Social Security number from Connecticut. Uh, it well, we looks know, like, we know, Wayne, yeah. from day one, he has this meteoric rise, clearly CIA on both sides of the family. Yeah. Uh, we've gone over all that in long interviews in the past, but now they've brought out the obviously fake new birth certificate. Then they produced the Bin Laden uh, rabbit out of a hat trick. But still, he's got one of the lowest approval ratings, well, the lowest ever recorded this far in, and, 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 and plunging so fast. Uh, what do you think the establishment's planning to do with Barack Obama, who they gave the Peace Prize to, where they did everything for? They were clearly planning on him being a messianic leader to sell us tyranny, but uh, their precious creation has blown up in their face. So what comes next, and what else did you learn on your travels? Well, I, I personally, I think, I think Obama's going to get another four years. Uh, we know that these electronic voting machines are... Are, are fixed, and, and so there's there, there are methods by which they can ensure that he's going to be reelected. I mean, I would note that the polling here in Virginia shows him tied with the Republican candidate. Well, I mean, Virginia uh, hadn't voted Democratic since 1964 for LBJ until it, it voted for Obama in 08. I can tell you that Obama is extremely unpopular here in Virginia, and I don't know how these polls are being conducted or who they're asking, but um, I think the fix is in. I think he's going to have another four years because they're very comfortable with this guy. He's doing everything that they want him to do. I would also note that when I was in Indonesia, last year uh, a, a movie was produced based on a book, uh, and I'm going to hold it up here. It's called Little, Little Obama. And this book and the movie was, I discovered, was funded by the United States government. Uh, it was supposed to come out concurrent with Obama's first state visit uh, to Indonesia, but he, he canceled two visits to Indonesia, so they had to release it without Obama present. But uh, when the, the movie was first produced, it was, it was screened by the uh, U.S. ambassador and the embassy staff, the CIA's political officer, at the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta, and they de demanded the two scenes be removed from that movie uh, of when Obama was there as a kid. Uh, one was his pledge of allegiance, his pledge of allegiance to the Indonesian flag, and his singing the national anthem of Indonesia in Indonesian. I would add, and also his praying in a Muslim chapel at the Mentang Elementary School. Yeah, Those so this guy were, were is a complete. Uh, shadow government CIA cutout. And, and I agree with you, the establishment likes Obama because he'll take all the hatred and blame for them. 
and we're seeing a lot of cooked and manipulated polls, or when Ron Paul wins a poll, the Wall Street Journal won't even show his name, MSNBC's done the same thing. The entire system is afraid of Ron Paul, uh, but expanding on that, the war he launched in Libya, where I know you visited, uh, yeah. without congressional approval, the super Congress taking the power of the purse uh, and handing it over to the president. Uh, we've got uh, fast and furious from your work in the government, NSA, Iran, Contra, all of it. Looking at fast and furious, tens of thousands of guns into Mexico. We now learned to drug gangs in Chicago, in Tampa, into Honduras. Uh, now it's come out in federal court confirmed. El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune, with the federal document that these drug kingpins that are getting busted are declaring, we work for ATF and CIA, and the government's coming in and saying it's true, release them. I mean, this is even bigger than Iran-Contra, uh, and it just shows how criminal these people are. What's your view on Fast and Furious? Well, I think it's it, 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 what, it, what we're seeing play out here is what we saw during the Bush administration, the imp, uh, implementation of the strategy of tension. The, uh, th these people do not want peace, <laughs> whether it's in the Middle East or in, uh, in Mexico or Central America or anywhere, North Africa. They want war because they profit from war. The IMF and World Bank profit from these situations where these governments are overthrown, destabilized, economies are ruined. Uh, you know, look, the people say that George Soros is this great progressive. Look at his background. He's done nothing but short and national currencies. He, he, I mean, he went after the uh, the rupee in Indonesia uh, about uh, 20 years ago. He also went after the Malaysian currency and the, and the Thai currency. The whole well, he says he's having a good crisis and makes jokes about people starving. Uh, and he he's anti-gun, anti-family. I mean, if there's something evil out there, he's behind it. And, and he's also bragging right now. Uh, that, hey, you're going to have to give a total economic dictatorship to the banks that engineered the collapse of Europe, or we'll have a worldwide depression. I mean, it's it's so transparent what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, he he can he supposedly controls things from the left, although he, it, it, he's not he's not from the left. And and Murdoch, Rupert Murdoch, on the other side, he controls things over there. So what we have are these these uh, these wealthy super billionaire uh, elites running the show and, and plunging uh, the, uh, countries into war and economic disaster just by snapping their fingers. And creating the illusion, and, 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 creating the illusion yeah. of a choice uh, between them. Um, so you think Obama will get away with all the power grabs, and then when some new president comes in after him, that'll just continue. Uh, I certainly hope you're wrong, Wayne, but this is, this is disgusting. Shifting gears to Libya, I know you've been to Libya, I believe it's repeatedly, uh, and uh, somewhat recently, and they keep lying. You know, first it was just loving rebels that were peaceful. Now they admit it's Al Qaeda. Reuters yeah. is saying, "Oh God, Al Qaeda is taking over Libya now." And it's like, "But you put them in there." They keep saying Gaddafi's been defeated. Turns out more than half the countries still under his control. I mean, this is the first time that we've seen things become completely Orwellian. It's like NATO and our own government is run by Baghdad Bob. And and everything is the opposite of what they say. Yeah, let me tell you what's next. Uh, apparently, there's been some secret protocol signed between the United States and the NATO countries that invaded, helped invade Libya, attack Libya uh, uh, to establish bases. You know, the U.S. used to have an air force base in Libya, Wheelis. It was a B-52 base. That's going. I mean, the U.S. is going to go back in there now with military bases. I understand that one military base is going to be located very close to the border with Sudan, which has already been broken up into two countries. South Sudan is basically a vassal state of the United States. So this States. is the African takeover beachhead. Yeah, yeah, and and Algeria, Algeria still supports uh, Gaddafi, uh, rich in natural gas and some oil, but mostly natural gas. When Algeria uh, basically. Uh, uh, said, look, we're not going to deal with these rebels. We, we, we detect that there's Al Qaeda amongst them, people that we consider unsavory. There were, there were two uh, uh, terrorist attacks in Algeria directed against uh, Algerian security forces blamed on Al Qaeda. I would say the next two dominoes that are going to fall will be northern Sudan, the, what's left of the country of Sudan after it was broken in two, and Algeria. This isn't over by any stretch. 
we're probably going to see uh, these uh, Soros staged uh, uh, themed uh, marches and and revolutions now in Khartoum and Algiers. And like a dog returning to its vomit, it has the double goody of strategy of tension, uh, wrecking uh, uh, the, the wealthiest economy, uh, lifting up the rest of Africa, Libya, and then they can come right back in in a few years, or maybe even just a few months, they're already talking about it, total contempt for the public, and attack the very Al-Qaeda they put into place if they don't follow the orders just exactly right, or stage a new false flag in Europe or the U.S., and uh, blame it on some cutout, made-up character. My God, I mean, I've studied a lot of spycraft and subterfuge in history, Wayne. I've never seen anything this ridiculously overt, uh, not even in the nasty uh, Soviet tricks they played in the 70s and 80s. Uh, do you agree with that statement? Yeah, and it's blatant. It's totally blatant what they're doing here. I mean, uh I mean, uh, Libya, uh, as you said, was uh, uh, one of the, uh, as far as social programs to help the people, one of the most advanced. Now we have something I reported after I was there the last time in May that black Libyans and, 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 and black guest workers from other countries in uh, sub-Saharan Africa were being targeted by the rebels. Now we have the mainstream finally coming around, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, all reporting that uh, black Libyans and Black uh, African guest workers have been subjected to beheadings and, and other uh, uh, the women raped and other uh, uh, the terrible human rights abuses. When I first reported that, the mainstream was, oh, no. Uh, I, I even asked the United, the United Nations Commissioner for Refugees this question here in Washington. He says, oh, well, we've heard those reports, and I've asked the rebels uh, about that. We asked the rebels, why didn't he do an investigation. This guy is a uh, former social uh, socialist prime minister of Portugal. He's right in with that whole, whole globalist European Union crowd. Well, Wayne, uh, Walter Fontroy, as you know, uh, the yeah. former D.C. Uh, delegate to Congress, uh, yeah. for folks that don't know, that's that's the equivalent of their Congress person because they don't have Congress people. He had to hide out for a month and was presumed dead. He finally got out. I know you know about this, but yeah. He said that he had to hide out because they were killing all blacks on site. That's now been confirmed. And that's one reason there's such a resistance to the Al-Qaeda takeover in the country is because they're not giving them quarter and they're just dragging any blacks they find out, men, women, and children. And there's giant dead piles of them all hacked up everywhere. And our media says, well, this is quite liberal and loving. Obama's doing it. Yeah. So, so that's the black cover they need it, as we said in the Obama deception that breaks all this down. And we even show and say Libya will be invaded. Uh, actually, Tarpley did in the film. It's incredible how he predicted that. But it's just amazing that 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 as long as they say it's liberal, then then you can do anything you want. It's just it's it's beyond ridiculous at this point. Yeah, and Fontroy also said he saw evidence that it was French and Danish uh, commandos in Libya that carried out some of these atrocities, some of these beheadings. I, I also understand that U.S. special forces were in Libya and are in Libya today. Now, here's how you know, know about the casualties. There were casualties sustained uh, among these Americans. Uh, I've been told that they're being, uh, they're being reported as uh, U.S. service people being killed in training accidents in Europe and other places. No, that's so how they always do up. it. But I've talked that's to absolutely. the Army. I've talked to the Army induction officer where the dead bodies come in for processing. Mm. And, and he said... Four months ago, he'd already taken five in to his office. And then just last week, they went ahead and admitted U.S. Special Forces are on the ground, and they've always been there. So you've been proven right on that again. Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com. In closing, as part of your globe trotting, your, your, your global surveying, uh, you've also gone to Japan, and we know the EPA months ago uh, said that, oh, well, we'll just raise the levels of radioactive isotopes 1,000 to 100,000 times what it previously was. We know milk and food all over the U.S. Has, has had as high as 50 times safe levels of different isotopes. And, and, and now they're reporting, we've got some graphics we can show from the news while you're talking, that as water pours in, it's, 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 it's continued Chernobyls on top of Chernobyl's and a lot of the Japanese government has now had to resign, admittedly lying about this. We just had a French nuclear weapons processing system with MOX fuel, plutonium blow up. I mean, uh, we had a Canadian reactor have a big spill. Uh, I mean, it, something weird's going on here. It's almost like somebody sabotaging 
uh, things are. I guess it's that thing of when it rains, it pours. Wayne, what do you see going on here since you went to Japan? Well, one thing I, I've been through Narita Airport in Tokyo many times, but I haven't been to downtown Tokyo since 1984 until this trip. And one thing that really uh, shocked me was where were uh, Tokyo used to be a bustling city, people everywhere. I, that my first reaction was, where are all the people? There wasn't all the traffic that I remember. Uh, I mean, yes, they've done some stuff downtown uh, to alleviate traffic, but I asked the question, where are all the people? It, I was told, look, many people have moved to southern Japan. Those who are able to get out have left. They've gone down to Kyushu Island, southern Honshu, and uh, and even into the uh, the Okinawa Islands. Uh, well, that's a huge story. So there's a giant exodus, and I've seen some reports, but they try to whitewash that. So, yeah. so the Japanese uh, um, didn't believe their government day one, and it looks like they, they did the right thing getting out of there. Absolutely. And, and like I say, uh, the lack of traffic, the lack of people. You, you know, you remember the Tokyo subway system was so packed at, at, at rush hour, they had to use these cattle prods to force people in. Yeah. You, don't, you don't see that anymore because there, there's not the traffic in the subway system that there used to be. Well, we know there's massive radiation sickness and there have been deaths. And why didn't the government just tell the truth from the beginning? I mean, wh why, did, why does government have this compulsion in all eras, in all times, in all civilizations to lie even when the truth would serve them? Because it just came out that they lied instead of yeah. responding. Well, I think the same thing happened in Japan. It would happen is what happened in the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, Obama allowed BP to run the show down there. BP was lying about the ca uh, catastrophe there. These reactors, most, uh, the, the, this is General Electric reactor technology. Uh, General Electric was calling the shots over there. They didn't want uh, it out that you know the, these reactors are inherently unsafe. And who is Obama's uh, chief of uh, jobs, uh, uh, the jobs program, who's his good buddy, Jeffrey Immelt. CEO of General Electric. Who, by the way, who, by the way, is moving the entire X-ray division of General Electric uh, to China. Who, by the way, is advising, and, and even Dennis Kucinich came out and said, hey, how about you create some jobs here in America? I mean, these guys do anything they can to shut this country down. In closing, why do you think that's the case? Well, I think Obama and the people around him, Geithner and, 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 and Bernanke at the Fed, and, and all these other people there that what they've done is they've turned the U S government and many state governments into wholly owned subsidiaries of major corporations. And we are the un, basically low paid or no paid employees of this, uh, this oligarchy that has seized control over the United States. That's right. And if that, you do happen to make money writing a book or starting a business, then they steal your money and give it in banker bailouts and corporate welfare to General Electric and people and General Motors to move out of the country. These people make me sick. And that's something the Republicans will never tell their constituents. Limbaugh and all of them sit up there and praise the Fortune 100. When the Fortune 100, to a company, are a bunch of anti-American, anti-free market, monopoly men, trash, and the enemy of every single free human on this planet. They are usurpers who have hijacked this country and finance Al-Qaeda to menace us into submission. Wayne Madsen, it's always great talking to you. I'm glad you're back in the U.S., and uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the future. Anything else on Japan or Obama or any other tidbit that you'd like to, in closing, have the final word on? I, I would just say that uh, the, 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 ne next year, uh, the, the Obama movie that was uh, released in Japan, uh, Young Obama, uh, is going to be released here in the United States. Uh, United Artists uh, bought the rights. It's going to be released. It's going to be that version at the U.S. Embassy. And then uh, the ambassador, a guy named Cameron Hume, who was no longer there, but he was the ambassador at the time, wanted to have these two scenes removed from the movie. It's going to be released here in the United States for the election campaign. Along with that other movie, they're, they're producing about how Obama killed Osama uh, or had him killed. Uh, and by the way, they admit the government's involved financing that with the great Hurt Locker people. And, of course, they're going to force feed the Obama uh, Jesus child uh, to the children in school like Al Gore's stupid video. Wayne Madsen, great having you on with us. WayneMadsenReport.com. Look forward to speaking to you very, very soon. You bet, Alex. All right, there goes Wayne Madsen, my friends.
Well, that's it for InfoWars Nightly News. Aaron Dykes will be uh, sitting in for me tomorrow night with some special reports and also a two-week review since the September 1st launch of InfoWars Nightly News. You, the subscribers, uh, make this possible. Please spread the word about InfoWars Nightly News, InfoWarsNews.com, and PrisonPlanet.tv. This is a true revolution in alternative media that transcends the left-right paradigm that is outside the box. Only the truth can set us free, and action with that truth can really empower humanity. Great job to the crew, and again, thank you to all the subscribers. We'll see you back tomorrow, 7 p.m. Central, right here at InfoWars Nightly News.